Well, ladies and gentlemen, hello. Welcome to Morkar Plays The Sims 4. Now, just to explain to you uh, what's going to be happening here, uh, my friend AA, also known as the Academic Agent, has designed a number of houses. Let me just uh, let me just show you uh, to these houses. So this is the town of Newcrest, and um, AA has made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine houses. And the nine houses are occupied by nine sims, uh, named after, uh, well, there's myself, Morkar, the evil wizard. Uh, there is John D. There is Charles Main. There is Lambda Variant. There is Saffron Stibber. Pharaoh Ego. Poe the Person. Uh, Dina Gloomy. And Radical Liberation. Dina Gloomy, if you don't know, is uh, a kind of goth girl uh, who, who, who's on Twitter. Now, um... The, the challenge here is, is as follows. Um, he has given me AA, who will now be known for the re remainder of this as the architect. He has designed um, these nine houses and, uh, you know, the, the, the people to live within them. And I, as Morkar the Evil Wizard, I'm going to try to uh, manage the lives uh, of these people living in these crazy houses that, uh, that the architect has designed. So on this first episode, all we're going to do is um, we're going to have a little tour of each of the houses to get to know uh, the characters and their locations. Now, uh, I'm going to be playing this game in what is known as a rotational style. So uh, in subsequent episodes, we're going to be spending a week with Morkar. We'll spend a week with John D. We'll spend a week with Charles Main, a week with Lambda, and so on and so forth as we, you know, as we go through so we're going to spend a week of in uh, a week of sims time um in each uh, in each episode and um just to show you um i have uh d made some decisions here i've turned off aging in the game uh because uh, sims time is quite a complicated um quite a complicated thing and um there are many different options but one of the things that I'm doing here, because what we're really interested to do is uh, we're interested in telling stories. We're interested in, um, you know, the day-to-day -day management of this um, and having to consider time while managing nine different families is probably going to be a bit too much for us. So I've turned time off and the only way that a sim can age is by eating a birthday cake on their birthday. I think they... Uh, the birthday cake is the only way to age uh, in this. Anyway, with that said, let's take a look at our first uh, character here. Morkar Evil Wizard. Who lives in uh, Morkar's tower, of course. I, I don't know why it's saying Lambda's Lodge, because uh, this place is called Morkar's Tower. Anyway, um, let's, just take a, let's just take a look at... Uh, more car we're gonna, we're gonna play here we're just gonna take a look at him so uh, here he is gorgeous 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 man that he is there's more car and um, if we uh, if we have a look he is uh, uh, can have a mental note of when his birthday is so, yeah, I've also set the season, so it's five weeks to a season. So we're starting in um, spring here, and then it's summer, of course, and uh, fall. And uh, Morkar's birthday is... Is that his birthday there? When's his birthday? Uh, um, he does have a birthday at some point. Don't know when it is though. Uh, okay. 
Let's just have a look for his birthday. It doesn't seem to exist. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Okay. Um, so here is uh, the evil wizard. Um, and uh, I mean, maybe with the aging turned off, they don't have set birthdays. You can just do it when, whenever you want. So we'll have to come up with birthdays for each of them. And um, he, of course, is quite literally an evil wizard. Um, he's a spellcaster, and um, obviously he has no skills or anything at the moment. Um, but he is, uh, as we can see, he's evil, he's a genius, he's a bookworm, and he's a quick learner. And he likes playing video games. Um, and because he is a spellcaster, because he's an evil wizard, he gets... Uh, he gets his own. He gets his own spell book, wherever that is. Here we go. Here's the. He's an apprentice spellcaster, as things stand. There's a whole spell book to play with, and it goes on for many, many pages. So this is going to be interesting. Um, do I like the look of any of these spells? Let's have a look. Uh, uh, I like the look of minion eyes. Zip zap. I like the look of that one. Untamed magic looks like uh, looks like a pretty good uh, pretty good spell casting tree. There's alchemy. There's all sorts of things to do. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, it is Morkar's ambition to be uh, you know the most powerful wizard in the world. And uh, with that said, let's take a look at his abode. So um, let's see what the architect has designed for the evil wizard. Here is um kind of garden patio space to, to hang out in. Uh, looks quite nice. Uh, oh yeah, very pleasant. There's a little bin there and uh, lovely places to hang out for more car, little little fruit bowl. And then um, let's take a look at the the wizard's tower. We'll have a little panoramic view here. So here's his wizard's tower. You can see it from the front. Um, lovely uh black uh, walls he's got a maze outside for some reason and um, if you have a look there are these uh, he's got like a crystal ball there he's got a little throne to sit on to look out over the lake some dark statue it's um, got a outdoor shower what else has he got he's uh, got some sort of bonfire thing for rituals there and um, if we go inside, let's see what else uh, is in this house. So I'm going to go and have a little little look inside. Um, and uh, oh, let's look at, look at this uh, little area, very tastefully decorated by the architect. A uh, little garden in patches. Uh, this is a some sort of cauldron, I want to say. Um, uh, okay, little little cauldron. Uh, there's, his, there's his mailbox. Let's go through the front door now to see what's uh, see what's in here then. So what's uh, what's in here? Uh, uh, do this maybe is it? So we can see inside. Uh, why isn't it bringing up? The graphics of what's inside. Uh, do we have to actually physically? Maybe he has to physically come here. Uh, can you come over here, please, Morkar? Uh, shit! Do I have to do this? Uh, uh, does he have to go here? How does he? How does he move? Oh, the problem is, is that he was visiting Lambda's house for some bizarre reason, and that's why we couldn't see inside. That explains it, why it was saying Lambda Variant's house. Okay. Okay, great. Now we can actually see inside. 
So let's uh, go through. The, who lives in a house like this? Let's go and have a look. Uh, Morcar is evil. Evil Sims becomes uh, happy for the misery of others and have a variety of ways to accomplish this. Okay, let's turn time off a minute. Uh, so this is uh, this is inside. He's got another cauldron there. He's got uh, all sorts of uh, things to make uh, herbs and potions with. Yeah, very good. Um, see what else is on this wall. Yeah, more herbage. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, Morka, Morka, um the, the architect has not actually given him a proper kitchen. He doesn't have a fridge, for example. Um, so it'll be uh, interesting to see how he copes with uh, out any mod, mod cons. But of course, he is a he is an evil wizard. So um, this is his bedroom. Some uh, dark sorcery there. Don't know what that cot is about. Um, I don't know what ideas maybe the architect was thinking of like Rosemary's baby or something. Um, yeah, more kind of nice um, stained glass window he's got. Uh, lovely. There's his bed. There's some sort of dark crystal, little little gnome in the corner. So yeah, lovely, uh, lovely little place the architect has given uh, given him here and. Um, then we come through to this, uh, is this some sort of perfume room, is it? Uh, looks like this may be where alchemy takes place. So, maybe, uh, I don't, we'd have to see, but obviously some sort of dark uh, shit goes down here as well. Enchantments, maybe. Um, nice little library for more car. So, and then... To get upstairs, he's given he's given uh, me a ladder here, the architect. Let's uh, let's go upstairs and have a little look. So upstairs we have, as we saw before, um, these things. But then inside the little tower, what is inside the tower? Uh, just, just a cupboard, yeah, not a lot in there. And then if we go up again, what's in here? Oh, look, it's just a, <laughs> it's just a bathroom. It's just a bathroom. So inside the evil wizard's tower, right at the top, you know, if you go up the top, it's just a bathroom at the end of the day. Uh, just a very fancy uh, bathroom. So let's see if we can go any further inside there to have a little look to see what's to see what this bathroom looks like. Uh, yeah. Uh, there we go. There are some. Uh, it's got mirror stuff on the walls. A couple of little. Uh, okay, so there's. Uh, there it is. Lovely. Okay. So that is uh, that is more cars. Let's go and have a look now at uh, John D's place in this uh, first episode. It's just a lovely, gentle tour where we have a look around. Yeah. So now we're going to have a look at John D's abode. And I've, for some reason, uh, John D has uh, changed himself. This is going to be something that we're going to have to uh, keep an eye on. Some the sim because it's um, the spring. The Sims are going to want to keep on changing, but uh, I'm going to insist that, that they wear their costumes uh, that were designed for them. So this is John D. Uh, as you can see, he uh, he has. Uh, this look and uh, he's an aspiring to be a painter extraordinaire um, what, are, what are the parts of John D he's an art lover he's a perfectionist 
he's a muser and he's a creative he likes painting and cooking um, and let's take a little look outside uh, to have a look at John Dee's house so you can see here that um, the Dee estate it's like a giant converted barn I think the architect has given him like a kind of barn type uh, type abode it's obviously like a country inspired he's got like uh, this lounge outside where you can um, smoke uh, galleon or shisha as it's known because um, he does look a bit like the caterpillar from uh, Alice in Wonderland over here there's uh, there's a pond Oh, look a lovely little uh, uh, fountain feature and uh, yeah, some ducks and swans and things and a uh, weeping willow I guess um, and then over here he has I think this is a chicken coop he's got uh, he's got an animal shed where you can keep animals He's got garden, you know, he's got uh, things that he can grow. He's got vegetable packs and things to start a uh, little, little garden here. So, yeah, no, something else is that all of the, all of the Sims have $20,000 to start off with. So they should be all right before, the, you know, they'll eventually need to get jobs and things. But in the early going, we should be all right here. Um, yeah, so now with all of that said, let's have a little look inside Mr. D's house. So uh, here he is currently in his study in his library here and uh, it's a very tasteful library. He's got some old computer, some old ancient computer the architect has given him there I see. Um, which is pretty much, uh, I mean I think uh, John D uh, in real life has got like a dot matrix printer and a an old apple from the 1980s um, and there's uh, there's some lovely books and things lovely library and then coming through here what, what have we got uh, gorgeous little kind of it's just like a it's like a room for entertaining maybe he's got uh, yeah nice very nice uh, very nice indeed the, the architect uh, tastefully decorated Although I will note that um, he he does seem to have he does seem to have not given D a front door, so that is going to have to be sorted out. I think as a matter of priority for D uh, when we when we control him um, because uh, we can't have that as a front door. Um, you know, anybody could walk straight in. So then we have uh, this little. Um, dining room I think yeah. dining room uh, this will need to be wallpapered I see I see the architect he hasn't completely finished these houses by the looks of things there's still like a couple of uh, little bits and bobs for us to do so that will be interesting he's got some uh, very tasteful very nicely done um, so this is uh, this is Mr. D's dining room I guess and then what else have we got uh, is that it? We've been. Oh, what, what's in here? Is this a kitchen? This is a kitchen. Oh, I'm just going to take get used to this uh, camera. Seems like there's a kitchen in here. Is there a way to get into the kitchen? Seems like uh, the architect hasn't given D a door. So that's going to be uh, very important to sort out for him because he can't actually get into his kitchen. This architect, I tell you, useless. There needs to be a door there, I think. Maybe we'll even build one now. Do you think? Uh, let me build a. Maybe D can spend some money on a door. He's going to need two doors, really. 
type of door is that? We're gonna in we're gonna give D a door here. Rainbow door. He needs a door. two doors. Yeah, there needs to be a door there, clearly. And uh, it's going to need two doors, I think, because this one needs replacing too. He needs a, like a nice front door. Need to give D a nice door while we're while we're here. I don't know uh, why the architect uh, gave such a shoddy shoddy door to D. Um, honestly, I think this one may be the maybe maybe the best one. So where should the entrance be now? Should we change it? I mean, clearly it's set up to be a hallway here, so... Okay, that'll do. So, let's... Uh... Okay, so we've seen... We've seen that this is just a hallway. There's his kitchen. There's his bathroom. Very nice bathroom it is, too. I mean, Dee has got some uh, very, very nice things. He seems to like the bust of this woman quite a lot. She, she seems to be everywhere. It's a nice, uh, nice abode. Now let's, uh, now let's go upstairs. And up the stairs, we can see he's got uh, his easel. He's got. Uh, oh, in fact, did we? There may be something else down here as well. Yes, look, his little studio, his artist's studio. He's got uh, an easel. He's got uh, little, yeah. He's got like paintings and things he uses for inspiration there. So he's got his own. He's got his own studio, which is very nice. And then if we go up the stairs, uh, what is up there? He's got a very large bedroom. Um, he's got a bathroom. Another bathroom. So two bathrooms in the D estate. Nice tiles. Nicely done, and then he's got um, he's got uh, like a another easel there and a grand piano and a bar, so very nice. So this is uh, this is the D estate. Okay, now let us move on. So going over to the Charles uh, Charles Mains Castle now. And there's Charlie standing outside his castle. As you can see, it's uh, surrounded entirely by water, which is kind of interesting. We need to. Keep this pause as he immediately goes on on his phone to check Twitter. Deviant that he is. Um, so then uh, we can have a look now. He's also got the swans and the ducks and things, and there's uh, more ducks. If we have a look around, there's this uh, like outdoor kind of mausoleum thing that he's got. Very kind of Bruce Wayne-ish. Uh, if we just have a look outside. Um, we can see that this is what his castle looks like in the, in the surround. Um, 
There's the, the imposing looking front door. I think the only way to get to it, uh, you can do some fishing there. The only way to get to it is through this, so he has to walk all the way around. And then, um, rumour has it that there's a crocodile in there somewhere, although I can't see it at the moment. Is he down at the bottom? Um, so, yes. And then, uh, we go down we'll do our little tour who lives in a house like this so let's go through the front door and see what's see what's in there so through the front door and he has got uh, just this kind of hall area go straight into this rather creepy looking room with a coffin in it and uh, dark 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 indeed so that's uh, that's that room. And what else has he got in here? He's got uh, here's another room. Um, it's like a tea set. So where's that bar? Where's that? Uh, he's got uh, okay, like a fireplace. Nice, yeah. Uh, and then he does have, you know, he's got kitchen, he's got fridge, look, uh, kitchen, uh, he's got his utensils and things, okay. Now, uh, he also, the architect seems to like putting ladders in place of stairs. We saw that uh, D had stairs, but um, the evil wizard and main have both got ladders to go upstairs. Let's see what's up here. And, uh, oh, it's just like an attic room. And there's not much up in the attic, by the looks of things. Just uh, just this uh, writing there. I don't even know how he's meant to... I suppose he could walk around there. Um, and then, what's this that uh, he's got? He's got like a fish tank and a chess set. And, oh, look, some uh, desktop laptop or is that TV some sort of TV and a jukebox interesting okay so that's Charles Main's house it'll be interesting to see how he gets on there is a, a little bathroom there as well a little loo in the corner okay that'll be interesting to see how Charles Main gets on living in this castle surrounded by a moat it's quite a small castle though isn't it, it doesn't have many rooms um, Anyway, so that's, uh, that's Charles Main's castle. Let's carry on. It's going to be interesting to see how these characters interact with each other and uh, how they get on and how they're going to deal with uh, the evil wizard schemings. But I think a large challenge is going to be actually living in these places. So here's... Uh, Lambda and again the game seems to really want to change their outfits but uh, this is what Lambda should be wearing there he is uh, um, and uh, I think the I think the architects done very well on uh, designing Lambda here he looks quite a lot like the real Lambda I think um, and then uh, let's just have a look at his place from the outside um, he is he has got this um, Oh, very like, uh, was it Bauhaus? Is that the, is that what they call it? The architects will know. Um, but yeah, this is a very uh, modernist architecture here for Lambda's house. And uh, let's see uh, what's what it what, what it's like inside. I mean, how is he gonna gonna live in that? Um, let's have a little look. Uh, so. There's his mailbox, uh, for some reason in the front door, um, that will have to be moved I think. Um, he's got some sort of uh, engineering equipment of some description down here, I don't know what these machines are, but uh, we'll, we'll have a look. Going up the stairs now, and oh look, it's like it's almost like he's trying to like live in a nightclub here. Um, yeah, he's got a little kitchen, you can see the kitchen. Okay, nice little kitchen. 
and he's got uh, this reminds me a little bit like a, of a James Bond lair or something like that uh, in here um, it's very kind of 19 1960s uh, in a way um, and then there he's got this uh, wooden bath and very minimalist living from Lambda very few decorations all natural light nothing in here completely empty he's gonna have to buy some stuff uh, Lambda um, we've got uh, well he's got bed just next to a next to a wall if we have a look see there's a there's a wall and then um, he's got a lot of uh, musical equipment like he's got this old organ many different types of guitars and this uh, very swish looking DJ set so uh, yeah we can have a look at Lambda uh, as a person um, he, uh, he's a music lover, he's outgoing, he's good, he's a muser, and he likes, uh, he likes fitness, he likes programming, and he likes the piano. Um, we actually forgot to look at Charles Main's characteristics. Shall I do that quickly? Sorry, I keep on forgetting uh, what we're meant to be doing here. So we'll just very quickly have a look at Charles' personality, because I... Oh, he's he's visiting for some reason again. Um, okay, so he's a geek. He has high metabolism, and he's a bro. Is Charles, um, and he likes fitness. He likes gardening. He likes programming, and he likes video gaming. So those are the those are Charles's. Uh, I don't know why he's not at home either. Why is everybody visiting Lambdas? I don't know. Obviously, some aspect of this uh, it's got everybody visiting Lambda for some reason. So, there he is, back in his castle. Um, Alright, let's leave here. And um, we do have this... Uh, there's this... Um, Bistro, um, which has got fast internet and there's a place to eat and all of these here. Um, we'll just have a little look down down in the bistro. So down in the bistro, just in case uh, the guys ever run out of food or they, they want other options or they want to hang out, they can go to this restaurant and then there are all of these. Kind of fast food options here as well. Um, these kind of street street stalls that they can uh, that they can go to. So we'll uh, we'll carry on the tour here. Here is uh, Saffron Stibber, and again, I think the game is continually going to want to change their clothes. I'm going to have to find a way to stop it doing that because it's very annoying. I want them to wear what I want them to wear. I disprove of their free will. Okay. So... Yeah, Saffron, no, she needs to be wearing her proper outfit as well, which is this. There she is. There she is wearing her proper outfit. There's, there's Saffron. Um, and we're going to have a little look at her. We're going to have a little look at her house. So, she lives in a, she lives in a bungalow. Um, not much in the way, she's got a big garden, but there's nothing in it, basically. Who's that over there? That's Radical Liberation walking around. Um, another neighbour that we've yet to meet. And um, I wonder if there's a way of uh, stopping them changing their clothes. It's starting to bug me. Uh, uh, outfits. How do I like stop them changing their outfit? 
sell the clothes maybe I, I don't know I have to look uh, I'm gonna have to look that up in time because I want them to stay in their correct outfits um, anyway she's got this uh, bungalow it's kind of quite plain from the outside as you can see she's got a little uh, little, little little bike bike there uh, nice and rustic and then going through the uh, where's the where's the front door um, Oh yes, the architect has given her a door. She's got a nice little yellow yellow front door and we'll go through and have a look into her living room and it's very uh cozy look. She's got uh she's got uh, stuff to do knitting, she's got a little rocking chair to knit on, she's got uh, all sorts of things. Um because uh let's uh, see about saffron, his symbology. She's childish, she loves the outdoors, she's cheerful, she's alluring, uh, she likes uh, handiness and um, obviously she's going to want to be a, she's going to want to be a champion knitter um, and she's got all of these things set up ready for her to, for her to knit um, and she's got this bedroom, uh, kind of like a, who's that, is that like a, jihadist on there I don't know who that is but uh, she's got uh, yeah interesting kind of a little bit student here I think but uh, it's all right um, and there's this long hall uh, in her house um, no set no stairs obviously because it's a bungalow she's got this little little bathroom and here's her kitchen um kind of a basic kitchen but yeah this is this is saffron's uh, little bungalow very nice indeed okay so i think that will be livable though for saffron she's got all of the things that she needs so i actually think it'll be easier to live in there than it than it will be for um than it will be for charles main to live in his place Don't know why they keep on all keep on changing all the time into uh So this is Pharaoh's house now. Pharaoh, uh, as you can see, he's at his little uh, little laptop, and um, he uh, he wasn't very happy when he saw this because uh, he looks quite a lot like Moby. Do you remember Moby from the nineties, the uh, music artist? Um, but uh, Pharaoh does actually look a bit like this, um, and uh, yes, he has got um, a house that uh, the architect has designed. I believe to look like um, uh, I believe it's to look like um, one of those glass houses that they make uh, in like changing rooms or something like that um, all uh, all kind of see-through and natural light um, it's uh, you know might get hot in there if he doesn't get some air conditioning but uh, there he's got, uh, it's very minimalist as you can see, he's got a few books and he's got his laptop. What else has Pharaoh got? He's got uh, a little TV and a, some sort of console there. Um, I, I wouldn't like to be so, I wouldn't like to see so many people looking in on me like that. He's got uh, just like some sort of zen zone over here. He's got uh, places to meditate and some sort of Japanese arts. Uh, he's got a downstairs. Downstairs we've got um, kind of a modern looking kitchen. What else is what else is in here? He's got he's got oh, there's a, like a dining area and a bar. It's like living in a it's like living in a kind of showroom or a or a restaurant or something. He's got a very modern 
stylish, uh, but also minimalist. There's a kind of Japanese through line to some of this stuff, I think. Uh, okay. Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh loves all of this sort of stuff, of course. And then, um, <laughs> and then uh, going upstairs, what is up here? He's got um, just just a massive bedroom. Just nothing but nothing but a massive bedroom. So, and the bedroom is extremely minimalistic again. One mirror. Okay, so there you go. Spacious, minimalistic. Uh, if we just have a look at Pharaoh's personality, he's got uh, he's an art lover. He's a bookworm. He's a geek. He likes contemporary decor and modern decor, and he also likes uh, gardening and video gaming and mix mixology. He likes his drink, uh, cocktails and things. So there's um, there's Pharaoh. Interestingly, the only character not to change out of the clothes that the architect gave them. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to have a look at uh, Poe the person's house. Let's see if she, if she'll have changed out the clothes that she's been given. If she has, we'll have to change her straight back. Oh look, she has, she has changed herself. So she's going to wear the outfit she's been given. She's watching TV. Okay, so there's, uh, there's Poe's outfit. You can see her. Uh, there she is. And um, if we have a look at her personality, she's ambitious, outgoing, she's domestic, and she's active. She likes gardening, baking, video gaming, and cooking. And um, the strange thing about Poe's house is that um, it is completely triangular. If we just zoom out a bit, it's a completely triangular house. Um... <laughs> So this is a very strange design from the architect here. And um, I suspect without even having seen any more that this may be one of the more difficult places to live. But let's just say, take a little tour of Pose. She's got uh, she's got some sort of like arcade stuff behind her. She, she's got her little desk under the stairs where she does her where she does her videos from. She's got a little computer there and a desk. For her Harry Potter videos, um, and then going up the stairs, we've got uh, kitchen. There's a like a kitchen kitchen unit. Uh, here you go. She's got kitchen. She's got a uh, little, little dining area there. Um, she may want to change the wall. I don't know why the architect has given her such scabby walls. Um, that looks grim. I would. Just, I think a priority for Poe is to change the walls, to change the wallpaper there, because that's horrible. Uh, she needs to, she needs to do that up straight away. She's got to have something to spend money on, and I think um, top priority for Poe, changing the wallpaper. So anyway, let's move up, and the next floor up is uh, just a landing with a little bathroom in there. This is a strange place indeed. Again, I changed the wallpaper. And then the next floor up, she's got bedroom. A uh, little kind of... What's, what's, hold on. What's uh, that she's got there? It's that big box. The architect clearly uh, very playful when he made Poe's place. And then moving up uh, to the to the top, and we can see um, she's got like a little sun lounger and a place to place to have drinks and things right at the top. So very interesting indeed. So there's Poe the person's uh, triangular tower, and we did uh, we had a look at her personality already. So very interesting. Oop. Clicked on. Clicked on the wrong thing there. <clears throat> I need to find a way to stop them changing their clothes all the time. I, I want to 
eliminate their other clothes. How do I do that? So this is a uh, Gloomy Dina's place. She obviously wants to be a vampire. <laughs> if you haven't seen uh, Gloomy Dina on Twitter, uh, I suggest you go and look at her because, um, you know, she uh, once I get her changed, hold on, she does actually look a little bit like this. Um, especially when I get her in a vampire gear. Hold on. There she is, look. Uh, there's... There she is in her in her vampire gear, and um, we're going to have a little look uh, from the outside. She uh, has a vampire's mansion. Um, it's actually quite pretty from the outside. It's a little bit imposing, maybe. Kind of disturbing uh, gravestones in the in the yard. Uh, big gate on the door and we have a little look inside to see what's in here we've got we've got a dining room nice uh, chair she's got the whole bar there uh, what else is in here big staircase kind of an open plan she's got one of those organs um, yeah nice place to trap by the fireside it actually quite looks quite nice for a vampire's place to be honest um, and then moving up she's got a uh, kind of magnificent kind of bedroom here lovely nice big bedroom um, where she'll maybe bringing a uh, prey because she, as I said she wants to be a vampire so uh, if we have a look at her personality she is, she's an insider, she's gloomy, obviously. She's evil, and um, she likes uh, writing, and she likes the colour black. Um, but I believe she wants to be a master vampire, so there we go. She's not actually a vampire, if you notice. Unlike Morkar, who's already a wizard, Dina is not yet a vampire, so it'll be interesting to see track her journey into becoming a vampire. How she's going to do that, I don't know, because uh, I've never played this game before. Um, but uh, there she is, currently in her study. Very nice looking study it is too. Then if we go upstairs, she has got, uh, what's this area up here? Kind of imposing looking gargoyle, coffin. Oh dearie me. I mean, presumably if she looks in that, she won't be able to see her refl reflection eventually. That's maybe her test to see how, when she's going to become a vampire. Some kind of uh, dark looking. Who are all these characters over here? Maybe members of Dina's uh, gloomy family. I don't know. So anyway, yes. That is uh, Dina's, uh, Dina's vampire mansion. Actually not. Actually looks like quite a nice place to live to be honest. Uh, despite its gloominess. Um, oh look, and she's got another. She's got another one of these to greet to greet the mailman. Okay, and finally, uh, the last person we're going to be taking a look at. There are some other things. There's this uh, karaoke bar, gym, art museum, library, and so on. Uh, they're all they're all over there. There's a fashion house. Maybe Saffron can be selling her uh, her kind of knitting to the fashion house. Who, who knows? Um, but the last person we're going to have a look at is Radical Liberation. Well, he's probably changed as well. Damn Sims, cha changing all the time. So this is Radlib, but we're going to change him into his into his home gear. Hold on. There he is, look. Brad Lib himself. <laughs> um, and he is he is family orientated, he's cheerful, he's a bookworm, he's domestic, and uh, he likes music, uh, especially of the singer-songwriter, retro music, 
he likes hobbies, uh, he likes singing, he's like writing, he, he also likes programming. Um, and let's have a little look at his place from the outside then. Uh, how do we see this? Uh, he has um, he has this kind of cottage. What's this outside? He's got uh, some sort of uh, some sort of chicken. Yeah, there's a, he's got chicken coop in the yard. He's got um, what are these strange things? I, these are probably uh, these are probably lunar shrines because he's the moon king. So he's got like. Um, a nod to his uh, being the moon king here. Those are his uh, moon moon shrines. Um, what, what, what else is what else? It's got like a babbling babbling brook. Lovely, yeah. So the waterfall feature, and then uh, going in through the front door, if I can. We can uh, have a look through the front door. He's got like a little. Here's his kitchen, and uh, a very quaint kitchen. This is this is where really like an old woman would live or something. But uh, anyway, he's got a. Uh, yeah, there you go. Little arts and little milk pail there. He's very uh, kind of Vashti Bunyan pilled is uh, Radlib. Look at, look at this place here. He's got. Doesn't have a TV, some like cozy cushions and things like that. And okay, nice, yeah. And then, yet again, standard, um, standard practice for the architect. I've noticed he's put a, just a ladder rather than a staircase. I'm guessing the architect couldn't figure out how to use stairs properly. Looking, uh, looking at the way he's designed a lot of these places. Um, and what what have we got up here? Oh, there's a bedroom. Kind of a tinsy little bedroom, to be honest. It's got uh, Radley has got like a world map. It's got like some old. I mean, it's nice. It's very small though. Uh, Radlib's gaff. Um, and then uh, yeah, just oh, lovely little, lovely little bathroom too. That's a bit modern that the architects put there compared to the rest of the place. But uh, I guess the man needs to live. So it'll be interesting to see how Radlib gets on living in his cottage. All right. Well, that's all for today, folks. Just a little kind of whirlwind tour of uh, all of the different Sims. Next time, Morkar will be playing his first week. And then uh, we'll decide who to go, you know, probably D after that. And then I don't know if we'll, we'll do Morkar and D first. And then we'll kind of maybe put it to the vote as to who as to who the third person should be. All right. Well, thank you very much, and I'll see you soon.